TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, and let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, we are partnering with the Blueprint Mastermind, man. We did do the roundtable discussion, man, where we go on there and we just talk, man. We just talk about whatever's going on. Um, I know a lot of the stuff that we talk about on here doesn't apply to y'all, but it's, it's, it's still interesting. Y'all can still come support the kid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Link down in the description anyway. Um, if you're looking for all my old content and all my old videos, it's over here on Facebook, man. So, you know, that link's also down in the description, man. The difference between the UK, Great Britain, and England explained? Now, I've been doing this for four years, I think, going on four years, reacting to UK content. And I've always called it like UK, go to family from Chicago to the UK, not UK, or not Chicago to England, not Chicago to Great Britain. Hmm. I didn't know there was a deciphering factor, you feel me? This is an educational Tuesday if y'all haven't guessed by now. I've just been just getting educated, you feel me? Let's get into this, man. This is by CGP Gray. I don't know what that is, but let's get into it. They got six million. Subs. Welcome to to the United Kingdom and a whole lot more explained by me, CGP Gray. United Kingdom, England, Great Britain, are these three the same place? Are they different places? I swear I thought they were the same place, man. But if you're here to tell me that they are different, I'm here to listen. Do British people secretly laugh at those who use the terms incorrectly? Who knows the answers to these questions? I do, and I'm going to tell you right now. For the lost, this is the world, this is the European continent, and this is the place we have to untangle. The area shown in purple is the United Kingdom. Part of the confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead is a country of countries. It contains inside of it four co-equal and sovereign nations. The first of these is England, shown here in red. This sounds like I know it, but do I know it? For Do I know it, know it? <laughs> England is often confused with the United Kingdom as a whole because it's the largest and most populous of the nations and contains the de facto capital city, London. To the north is Scotland, shown in blue, and to the west is Wales, shown in white. And, often forgotten even by those who live in the United Kingdom, is Northern Ireland, shown in orange. Each country has a local term for the population. While you can call them all British, it's not recommended as the four countries generally don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Welsh regard the English as slave-driving colonial masters, no matter that all three... Let's get negative. Hold on. Like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Northern Irish. Welsh regard the English as slave driving colonial masters. No matter that all three have their own devolved parliaments and are allowed to vote on English laws, despite the reverse not being true. And the English generally guard the rest as rural yokels who spend too much time with their sheep. However, <laughs> sit up. As the four constituent countries don't have their own passports, they are all British citizens, like it or not. They are British citizens of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Okay, okay. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, okay. So I'm right when I say Chicago to the UK, because I mean all of them. I mean all of y'all. England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and, and Scotland. I mean every all of y'all. And a lot of the time, I only cover stuff from L London, though. Which isn't fair then. That's not fair, right? I should be covering stuff from all of them. All four of y'all. Dang, what a realization. I got a lot of, no I had a lot of Northern Ireland stuff. I got a lot of London stuff. Or not London, England stuff. Wales and Scotland though? My bad, y'all. My bad. <laughs> Britain and Northern Ireland. So where's Great Britain hiding? Of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So where's Great Britain hiding? Right here. The area covered in black is Great Britain. Unlike England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, Great Britain is a geographical rather than a political term. Great Britain is the largest island among the British Isles. Within the United Kingdom, the term Great Britain is often used to refer to England, Scotland, and Wales alone with the intentional exclusion of Northern Ireland. This is mostly, but not completely true, as all three constituent countries have islands that are not part of Great Britain, such as the Isle of Wight, part of England, the Welsh Isle of Anglesey, the Scottish Hebrides, the Shetland Islands, the Auckland Islands and the Islands of the Clyde. The second biggest island in the British Isles is Ireland. It's worth noting at this point that Ireland is not a country. Like Great Britain, it is a geographical, not political term. The island of Ireland contains on a two countries, Northern Ireland, which we have already discussed, and the Republic of Ireland. When people say they are Irish, they are referring... Oh, so Ireland is two... Okay. 
to the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country from the United Kingdom. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even though England in particular like- Hey, whoa. Slow down, this is a lot of knowledge to intake right now. I didn't know none of this. To pretend that it's an island in the mid-Atlantic rather than 50 kilometers off the coast of France, but that's a story for another time. To review, the two largest islands in the British Isles are Ireland and Great Britain. Ireland has only two countries, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, while Great Britain mostly contains three, England, Scotland, and Wales. Wow. These last three, when combined with Northern Ireland, form the United Kingdom. United there are still many unanswered- Wow, okay. Thumbnail. <laughs> My bad. That's Questions such as why when you travel to Canada is there British royalty on the money? To answer this we need to talk about empire. You, know why that. you can't have yeah, gone to school in the that. English speaking world without having learned that the British Empire once spanned a fourth of the world's land and governed nearly a fourth of the world's people. While it's easy to remember the parts of the British Empire that broke away violently, we often forget how many nations gained independence through diplomacy, not bloodshed. These want to be nations struck a deal with the empire where they continue to recognize the monarchy as the head of state in exchange for a local autonomous parliament. To understand how they are connected we need to talk about the crown, not the physical crown. Uh, CGP Grey, are you really talking this fast or is this sped up? I like educational videos nowadays, man. I don't know. When I was in high school, I could care less. So if anybody's watching this in school, because I know some of y'all teachers watch these videos in school, there's going to come a point in y'all life where you're like, mm, let me go to YouTube and educate myself. <laughs> that sits behind glass local autonomous parliament. To understand how they are connected, we need to talk about the crown. Not the physical crown that sits behind glass in the Tower of London and earns millions of tourist pounds for the UK, but the crown is a complicated legal entity best thought of as a one-man corporation. Who created this corporation? God did. According to British tradition, all power is vested in God and the monarch is crowned in a Christian ceremony. God, however, not wanting to be bothered with micromanagement, conveniently delegates his power to an entity called the crown. While this used to be the physical crown in the Tower of London, it evolved over time into a legal corporation soul, able to be controlled only by the ruling monarch. It's a useful reminder that the United Kingdom is still technically a theocracy with the reigning monarch acting as both the head of state and the supreme governor of the official state religion Anglicanism. Such are the oddities that arise when dealing with a thousand-year-old monarchy. Back to Canada and the rest. The former colonies that gained their independence through diplomacy and continue to recognize the authority of the crown are known as the Commonwealth realm. They are, in decreasing order of population, Canada, Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Jamaica, the Solomon Islands, Belize, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis and Tuvalu. All are independent nations, but still recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. There are three... My boy, you are outdoing yourself, sir. ...further entities that belong... ...recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. There are three further entities that belong to the crown, and these are the crown dependencies, the Isle of Man, Jersey, and Guernsey. Unlike the Commonwealth I'm realm, they are not considered independent nations, but are granted local autonomy by the crown and a British citizenship by the United Kingdom, though the UK does reserve the right to overrule the laws of their local assemblies. Are we done now? Almost, but not quite. There are still a couple of loose threads, such as this place, the tiny city of Gibraltar on the southern coast of Spain, famous for its rock, its monkeys, and for causing diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. Or what Is that where the monkeys always robbing people? about the Falkland Islands, which caused its monkeys, and for causing diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. Or what about the Falkland Islands, which caused so much tension between the United Kingdom and Argentina that they went to war over them? These places belong in the last group of crown properties known as British Overseas Territories, but their former name, Crown Colonies, gives away their origin. They are the last vestiges of the British Empire. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they have not become independent nations and continue to rely on the United Kingdom for military and sometimes economic assistance. Like the Crown Dependencies, everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Gibraltar, the British Virgin Islands, Akrotiri and Dekelia, Anguilla, St. Helena, the Ascension Islands, Tristan de Cunha, Montserrat, the British Indian Ocean Territory, the South... How old is this? Hold on. How old is this? This is from 11 years ago. Does this... Does this some of this is not still what's happening, right? Some of these have gained their independence. Some of... Not these particularly, but... Why South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands, the Falkland Islands, the British Antarctic Territory, and the Pitcairn Islands. For our final Venn diagram, the United Kingdom is a country situated on the British Isles and is part of the crown which is controlled by the monarchy. Also part of the crown in the British Isles are the crown dependencies. The independent nations of the former empire that still recognize the crown are the Commonwealth realm, and the non-independent remnants of the former... ...former empire are the British Overseas Territories. Thank you very much for watching. Okay. I think I got it. I think I know more about the United Kingdom, the crown, 
Scotland, Wales, London, uh, Ireland. Then I do about the United States. All right, tell Lily like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna go.